Wah! It is... Wah, Luigi time. It's Liza P. Uh, we are back. Um, so, one thing I wanted to point out uh, is the Nose of the Shadow. Uh, the sh specifically, the shadow cast by the light of the Hotel Stargazer. Uh, as you can see, the nose is big. Oh. And I like that detail. That's insanely good detail. Wow. Yeah. Oh. I'm 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 even gonna like pretend that's like uh it's like a minor thing. That that definitely is like wow. That's impressive. Yeah, and it's only for that shadow, not every shadow. Oh, definitely I get I get it. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Those, like genius details. Yeah, one of those things that you probably won't notice on your first playthrough. Alright, I am here because that's not actually where I wanted to be. Aha, uh -huh, you fool. Well, no, I wanted to talk to Giangio, but, uh... He's actually towards the end. This teleporter is actually closer to him. That's fair. Uh, so how's your week been? It's it's been interesting. We got snow up here. Oh, nice. Uh, we did not get snow down here. Well, you, you you'd think that like people who are very used to snow wouldn't be freaking out every time there's like a snow warning. Yeah. Anyway, uh, everything was a nightmare. People are freaking out everywhere. Oof. Or rather, everybody yesterday was freaking out, and we got and there was like a bazillion orders at the place I work. If, which is like not a massive issue, but it is like, people, please, we, we were overloaded. <laughs> I, we don't have enough people trained for this. <laughs> the gold coin fruit might just be a myth, <laughs> but in the midst of an epidemic, it might be our salvation. And you were like, know if you find it? Uh, how are you, I'll give you this, by how way. are you having this much trouble? And we're like, our, our people are trained for like five or six orders tops, not ten in a single hour kind of, Jesus. Kind of orders. Yeah. Yeah. My. And like, oh, why was I not told this? And I'm like, you're supposed to get an email when we're done. Why are you here early? <laughs> That's the email. My day's been, oh wait, actually, uh. My day has been a little bit hectic. Or not mm. my not my day, my week was a little bit hectic. Uh so we're in the Church of St. Frangelico, and I do love that the entire time you uh you're in, uh, the entire time in this you're going down. I oh, do yeah. I, like that pit right there is the boss area. The bottom of that pit. We have to make our way all the way down there. I I love it when the motif is going down, you know. Yes, yeah, uh, on a uh, in a church specifically. Ooh. Well, because... Absolutely, I get it. But like, definitely, just going down in general is always a nice, depending on like the location. Yeah, you're a big fan of going down. Eh. Oh, no, I it took me like a good way too long to get that. What a thrill in darkness. darkness. No, that's not the long ladder. I don't actually know the lyrics. <laughs> that's fine. We have several episodes before uh, you need to learn the, them. The really long ladder? Fair enough. That was on me, I, I jumped the gun. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Eh. I didn't know you could do that. You never tried throwing things to the people that are hanging? 
No, I usually just uh, wait for them to come up, but then I puppet arm them and just sort of fly across the map to then slam them into the ground. That's fair. I didn't really use the robles. I use the robles so sparingly that I forget they exist. Oh. <laughs> uh, I use them a lot more in uh in New Game Plus. Because New Game Plus, pretty fucking hard. Fair enough. I'll probably use them a lot more often. Uh... There we go. I'll probably use them a lot more often in this one, just because for like some of the harder bosses, just because I don't want it to drag on. You know? I get you. But some of the harder bosses can be tricky, and I definitely get the appeal of having the throwables on hand. Yeah. I do like the church. It's a I I love church levels. Yeah, church levels are neat because it's it's a holy sacred location, and then you're like throwing monsters in it. Oh yeah. What makes a monster and what makes a man? Ha ha! Nope. There we go. Uh, and I love massive gears. <laughs> yeah, N not even gonna like pretend otherwise. Massive gears in a location always a plus. Absolutely, especially if they stop midway through or start midway through. I remember like this. a change in like gears is always great. Oh yeah, I like gears that are. Uh platforms but that's fun I forgot I like gears that are war I've only played the first gears of war I played uh, gears of war one two and three and then I haven't touched any others and I was really big into three like I I played the the beta when that came out I love this puzzle, by the way. Oh yeah, setting setting uh, the stuff on fire to like clear it out. Yep, and revealing the uh, uh, revealing the the extra thing. Yep. Yeah. Oh wait, isn't there a thing for uh, writing that? Uh, yes, but I want to do this first. Ah, fair enough. You know, unlock the shortcut. Ah, genius. I need to... There's a couple things I need to do uh, first. It requires me to... Eh, I could have gone down, but this is faster. I, I need my... Um, my grindstone. I need to refresh my grindstone. You know what the thing I really don't like about Bloodborne is? Do tell. Uh, you know how you go to the, uh, like there's the lanterns that will, uh, and those take you to the Hunter's Dream, right? Yes. You can't just sit at them to refresh the enemies. You have to teleport to the Hunter's Dream in order to respawn the enemies. Which makes grinding atrocious. I don't think so. No, it's absolutely. Have Have you played it? Yeah, I have Bloodborne. That's why I got a PlayStation Five. Because, because I'm thinking, and I'm like, 
I don't remember that being a thing. I thought that was only if you wanted to teleport. No, you can't teleport without. Uh, or you can't. Uh, you can't even sit down at it. Like it's only used to teleport. Like teleporting is what. Uh, ref that's not what I wanted, but. That seems like so very wrong a statement, but I don't know enough Fucking about web hell. to to to, uh, to say I that you're wrong. <laughs> I hate narrow ledges. Oh, narrow narrow ledges are always obnoxious when you got like the flippy combat styles, so you're always like jumping about. Yeah. You think you're doing great, and then. Whoop. You just backflip right off a cliff. God. Dark Souls 2. The uh, old Iron King. It's a very small platform uh, surrounded by lava. And there is a hole in the towards the back of it next to the wall that I always fall into. Oh, yeah. I have definitely seen that uh, get brought up in very passive-aggressive Dark Souls uh, 2 comment. Oh, uh, people are people are so passive-aggressive and regular-aggressive towards Dark Souls 2 for good reason. There's a lot of decisions that were made that were uh, less than optimal, to say the least. I definitely get every single criticism of Dark Souls 2. On the opposite hand, every series has growing pains, and I think like Dark Souls 2 is one of those definitely not as bad growing pains. But I think in like a series that's as like meticulous as like Souls likes, it's it's a growing pain that mattered, you know? Yeah, this is not where I wanted to be. Uh, I definitely have. I played a lot of Dark Souls 2. I thought it was great. Dark Souls 2 was the first Dark Souls I beat. Not the first one I played, but the first one I beat. That's fair. Oh. Dark Souls 2 is an amazing game. Yeah. The it, problem is every the game before and the game after it are both perfect games. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean. Dark Souls 2 does still have serious issues, uh, oh, like even but standalone. Those issues, those issues are only really noticeable when like you have like the comparisons to make. If Dark Souls 2 was the only no. game ever made, these issues wouldn't be as noticeable. Not people will still like it would still be a gank fest, and uh, I, I would still complain about uh, uh, the relationship between Earth and Peak and the. Uh, uh, Iron Keep. Fair enough. <laughs> Come on. Where the fuck are you? There you are. To be fair, you don't notice those things. You're like really in the mood, you know? Really going at it moment to moment. Sometimes fuck. it's easy to like forget where you've been. Fucking hell. I miss my I, I I miss the saw blade I use. Can't I, I'm gonna be getting it this episode. <laughs> that's that's fair. And then once I do, I'm gonna upgrade it. That's the reason why I haven't upgraded this one. Uh, because you're waiting for like your uh my fave, my unproblematic yeah, fave. Oh. So. A video came out recently. Uh, well, so uh, about like four months ago or four or five months ago, uh, somebody made a video dissecting every um, stance that Lily Orchard had about Steven Universe and why she is fundamentally wrong on just about all of them. 
And that prompted, and her video, uh, her Steven Universe, really bad Steven Universe takes were, uh, like, what, five years ago she posted them? Uh, but it prompted her to make a video about a month ago. And, uh... I swear, every time I hear about Lily Orchard, it's never like Lily Orchard says, it's, have you heard about that person who completely dunked on Lily Orchard last week? <laughs> yeah, that's because, uh... She is full of bad takes. But what, what I mean is, like, the first time I heard of Lily Orchard... Was the in, like, a, in, Dire Gentleman... The the one about the, the guys who are like, yeah, we 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 won't read through like all of her rules of writing. These are all nonsense. <laughs> that that video. Yeah, the dire gentleman. The one that yeah, that, that that's a good video. It's like most of it is she's just mad about uh Shira. About <laughs> yeah, she she's just mad about Shira and Steven Universe. I have actually read like really good reasons why like she rose bad, but like they're none of them come from Lily Orchard. <laughs> and I'm saying this is somebody who's never actually seen she rose. It's uh, not that bad of a show. Uh, one of the one of the reasons I heard was from somebody who was like really adamant that the show is bad is because the reasoning is it's literally just an Americanized version of like fucking hell. Taylor Utena or something. Oh, uh, that, that, Revolutionary Girl Utena. Yeah, Revolutionary Girl Utena. Yeah. Where it copies, like, a lot of the visual appeal, and uh, then it just copies, like, most of the story beats. <laughs> well, no, not most of the story beats. Utena has a very dip. It, it, it has the spirit of Utena, but not, like, the story beats. The story beats about Utena is, uh, it's about gender roles. Mm. Uh, it's about gender role. the The main villain uh, uses his sister as a way to like get power, like use a, to get power. Literally traps her in a coffin, uh, and it's a. Uh, uh, it, it's actually pretty good story wise, but not animation wise because it had the budget of a ham sandwich and a. Uh, paperclip. On the topic of uh, shows about gender roles, I have been watching Blue Eye Samurai, and there was an episode about it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, the the character who's like a princess uh, escapes her home to chase after the man she loves, uh, Tygen, who has been shamed in a duel with the protagonist. So Tygen is obsessed with getting his honor back. And she just wants Tygen back. So she's chasing the uh, protagonist of Blue Eyed Samurai, uh, seeking him out. And the uh, the big reveal. Let me there's get a, me out of here. Confrontation. There's a confrontation in like episode four between her and the samurai, where fucking. So, so everybody believes the samurai is a boy, but the samurai is actually a girl. Yeah. Big room. Yeah. Um. And what ends up happening is every, most of the men characters tell the uh, the princess character Kemi, like the role of a woman in our society is they got two choices: prostitute or. Uh, or sold off as, like cattle. Fucking. And and then like she runs into the samurai, and the samurai samurai fucking just hell. does that. And the samurai says that sort of exact same thing, but with like a different twist on it. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna need silence when I get to that guy next time. Okay. Anyway, what ends up happening is like because she doesn't know that the samurai is a dude. <laughs> uh, the samurai is a girl. She thinks that's another man saying it to her. Oh. You know? oh there, there's Giorgio. What's yeah. he doing there? Oh, he moves here after he gives you the cube. Oh, that's weird. I must have missed that. 
<laughs> because I'm because I'm like, huh? I I never didn't never notice him there in my playthrough. Because he was that he went right back to uh, he vanished until I got all the way back to, back to base. No, he uh, stands here. Uh, he stays here for the next couple chapters uh, un until you find the uh, gold coin tree. Okay. I'm just doing this for the quartz. Um, but yeah, uh, Lily Orchard is, uh, uh, she really hates Utena. Like, she hates Utena. Because she doesn't Ooh. understand Utena. Like, the, the, the video of, uh, the oh I don't want to be here I don't want to be here uh, the video that you're watching about uh, Lily Orchard uh, also did a video like breaking down uh, Lily's video about Utena oof by the way I love the uh, arm that turns into a I don't well, I, I'm, I'm kind of a slut for like weaponized shields that are body your body. I mean, yeah, it's a good aesthetic, but Fuck. there was a Naruto character whose gimmick was just making his body part into weapons. Yeah, the because bones. No, no, you're thinking of uh, the bone guy. The other one I'm referring to is uh, Jungo. So when Sasuke finally Fucking hell! Naru, okay, hold on. I actually will need silence when I get to him. Okay. So continue talking. Uh, so... So when Sasuke finally betrays Orochimaru, as everybody knew, knew he would, um, what Sasuke ends up doing is he hires out, like, three extra people to be his, like, Associates. Yeah, the origami girl and the forgettable ones. No, no, no. The origami girl is uh, one of the uh, Kosky. Oh. Uh, the three he hires out are the red-haired girl who is obsessed with him. I thought that was uh, the origami girl, wasn't it? No, the... she didn't. Ha she, she doesn't have origami powers. Weird. The origami girl was also obsessed with him, though. No. No? Are you sure? All right. The origami girl uh, is obsessed with pain, as in the character, not the concept. Like, um, I, I know, I know what you're getting at here. Um, it's been so long since I've read Naruto. The three girls who are really into Sasuke for no reason I can come up with are are so Sakura, Ino. Eno and Puna High, yes, is her name. I just call her the red haired girl that's obsessed with Sasuke. Yeah, as opposed to the pink haired girl. Okay, shush. hell you're doing great fuck you I will kill this guy I hate the shield so much actually fuck it <laughs> now I know how I'm gonna do this are you cheesing it of course I am oh uh let's see look I love cheese as the neck as much as the next white person but you gotta get some crackers and wine out if you're gonna really do cheese, you know? Uh, yeah. So Lily Orchard is uh ha has really bad takes. You're you're not all the way through the video, but you did get past the part where she continues to insist that the uh, the, the diamonds. diamonds are Nazis? Yeah, they're not. They're it's about uh uh it's an environmental message. 
Like they're also about colonialism, but whatever. Yeah, and uh, it, it's about a lot of things, but yeah, it is about uh, environmentalism and colonialism, which do tend to go uh, hand in hand in terms of because uh, uh, you know. When people colonize places, they tend to destroy the land. Yeah. Um, but they're not Nazis. She tries to claim that the Crystal Gems were, were branded with stars be, in reference to the Jews being made to wear stars in Nazi Germany. Which is weird and wrong. Because that's a mark they chose themselves in universe. Yeah, and uh, like, like the who to pe chooses a symbol does radically change like the meaning of the symbol. Oh yeah. On that note, one of my favorite um, just random comics is the, the one in which it's like. Fucking hell! I was out of rain! Do I not have the link dodge? Did they do the update? Hold on, I'm gonna check my fucking P organ. Well, I need to anyway, check favorite, something. Anyway, uh, one of my favorite, like, comics is the Better Call Saul one where he's trying to defend Magneto. And he's going like, The US government would like you to believe that my client, a father of four... And a Holocaust survivor is guilty of crimes. <laughs> yeah. He's just bringing up all of like the incidents that Manito's life, and I love that. That that that's funny. Yeah. Uh, anywho, the reason why Rebecca Sugar chose uh, stars, that, five pointed stars. Uh, you know, the the Holocaust Jews were made to wear six-pointed stars. Um, but the reason why Rebecca Sugar chose five-pointed stars is be for two reasons. One, they're easy as hell to draw, so kids can draw them. And B, because they're gender neutral, so boys and girls uh, would have no issue with watching them, uh, with wearing them. I, I definitely get that, because, like, one of the things about, like, if you're designing characters or, like, symbols, you definitely want people, especially younger audiences, to be able to draw them. Oh, yeah. That's why Phineas and Ferb, uh, the creators of Phineas and Ferb, uh, chose very geometric shapes for their heads. I love Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> uh, and that's why they... And that's why Steven Universe has them have simple enough designs uh because you know uh garnet's a square pearl is an oval uh steven's got a heart-shaped head that's why so many shows have the quote-unquote cal arts style is because it is easy to draw which makes it marketable especially, especially like pokemon like all the pokemon designs have gotten way simpler with that in mind, particularly. I mean, a lot of them have also gotten pretty fucking complex. True, but a lot of the starters that kids are supposed to oh, really yeah. like have much simpler designs. And that that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I don't mean, like, every single yeah, Pokemon yeah, design yeah. is, like, really simple now. No, they still have the really complex ones. Well, I mean, what it... I mean is the ones that the kids are supposed to like. Yeah, well, I mean, like, the, uh... Uh... Um, like, the legend, like, Maridon is, like, a hell of a lot more complex to draw than, like, Zapdos or Mewtwo. True. You want to know what one of my favorite child drawings is? Uh, what? The picture, the, the kid who drew Broly... Uh, and, and submit it to, like, some, uh, magazine or some shit. Uh, that's where the phrase, Broly's Powers Maximum, comes from. Oh! That, that's actually kind of cute. I've always liked Broly. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean that in, like, the meme way, where it's like, Broly's so cool, but so dumb. I actually think the dumbness is kind of integral to his character, to making him likable. I like Super Broly a lot more. 
That's fair. I totally get it. Um, I definitely get why like people are what like, the yeah, fucking the dumbest hell? Kind of what am I getting caught <laughs> on? Something's getting me caught on the geometry, or I'm getting well, stuck on some kind of geometry, and I don't fucking know what. I think the dumbness is integral to Broly's character because it really. I think it's his shield. His I think I might be getting stuck on the geometry of his shield. Yeah, now I'm out of those. Yeah, for for Broly, I think him being like kind of stupid with his motivation is kind of important to making him likable, which always always difficult. You, sometimes you make like the character with the most intricate backstory you can come up with, and it's like, oh, I don't get the character. Fuck it. I'm can I I'll come stupid. back to him later, because we have spent thirty minutes. Oh, on the hey, one fight. Yeah. Do you want to uh, just skip? Uh, do, do you want to just end the video and not show it, <laughs> or or restart the video? No, I I think everybody should uh, should hear these conversations that we had, even if the uh, the stuff around it is stupid as heck. <laughs> Fucking hate that. Any uh, part of the issue I'm having is a I don't have the saw blade I'm super used to uh, that just tears those guys apart. And B, I don't have the fully upgraded puppet string, so I can't do the cool shit. The, the thing that you usually do to uh, deal with that kind of enemy type? Yeah, when they become a lot more common. Yeah, eh, that's fuck fair. It. I'll try one. You know what? Are you gonna do it? Don't worry, now the fact that this is the last time you're going to do it means it's going to be the time you do it instantly. Jesus Christ, what was with that stun? Get over here. Get over here. Fine, you gonna be like that? Fuck it. I don't fucking care. <laughs> that guy pissed me off. <laughs> and there's a reason why we needed to beat him. Not just because of the course, but for other reasons. Your pride? Your dignity? Well, also that. But more importantly... Going up! No. Going down. You're not gonna lie, I thought this was the one that goes up. Wait, then... Where's... I it's am so... The next area. It is? Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, it's in this area. When you get to the area where you get to choose to fight the boss, you can instead go up some stairs and uh, find the elevator up there. God, that is so much later than I thought it was. Yeah, they make you wait a bit. I'm surprised to see. Uh. Well, alive. The um. Oh, where are my I'm so oh god, I don't even remember what we were talking about. I'm the only one left. Everyone's dead. I don't remember either. Shit, that means I need to go back up there for reasons. Because there's so much stuff I'm... Uh, I, I thought that the, the, it was... We fight him and that the elevator goes up and then we go around the other way. Mm. 
Maybe it'll give me the strength to carry on. We'll carry on. We'll carry on. So I fucked up her quest the first time I played. Please bring me the holy mark. Yes, I recall you mentioning that. Do 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 explain for the audience though, and not for my benefit, because I forget everything. <laughs> Alright, so uh Oh wait, hold on, I need to swap this out to that. So she uh she's like, Hey, can you go grab this thing from his office? And I was like, Okay. So then I beat the boss of the area and because I was like, okay, so it's a thing that belongs to the boss. Uh, so that means I have to kill the boss to get the thing she wants. Nope. Nope. It's uh, not. It's just in his office. You're going to get to it any time. Well, I mean, yeah, once we get to it. But, yeah. yeah fair enough. Uh, so I do like this level though it, this uh it's basically like three separate rooms but they they're intricately designed yeah and they're very vertical absolutely i love verticality in souls like games because but mostly because like the verticality is important to seeing where you are and where you i think this been. is the bloodborne weapon oh no it's not this ain't the, the one circular thing. saw yeah i was thinking this was the pizza cutter that's a bit later. You buy that from Merchant, I believe. Look at me having played the game only one time, but still knowing the layout better than you do. <laughs> well, that's because I played it multiple times. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Wait. So if that's the way forward, then what's down here? Um. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah, I remember that. That's um. That's where you get an item for um. For a quest line. Oh right! You know what? I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna do this uh quest real quick. Duh. See, I thought down here was the way forward. Yeah, I'm gonna do this because I really love the uh the reward for that. Hmm. I do love all the cryptic vessels. That's that's very clever. Oh yeah. Uh, later on, there's a cryptic vessel that you need to uh, decode before talking to a character, or else you can fuck up their quest. Um, it, it's one that I am not going to be fucking up because I will make sure to do it in the right order. Oh yeah! Oh wait, that's the Legion plug, not the. Damn it! It's not the thing I wanted. I thought it was a. Uh... Oh, what's the other thing to? Up... What's the thing that upgrades the Legion arms? Because Legion um, plugs just unlock the new arms. Legion cylinder, I think. Yeah, it sounds about right. Legion caliber. Yeah, the Legion. I thought that was a like Legion caliber. I think I'm gonna upgrade, start upgrading my health next. That's fair. That's probably a good idea. At least until I get it to 15. 15 can carry me the rest of the game. I would expect nothing less from you. What I mean, of course, is that this is a humble invention of my. I love Vanini. A cipher device. Vanini is always fun. Like his um. His like, ego is great. Oh yeah, I love his glasses. I'm a big fan of big circular glasses that are tinted. Absolutely. Oh, you you love uh, blue eyed samurai. That's like what the main character wears all the time. Probably to hide the blue eyes. Yes. Some of these knockoffs could still hold secrets. You're welcome to take a crack. I love how he doesn't really look at you, well, but like that's crack. obviously because he's used to giving speeches. Yeah. He has no like interpersonal social skills. 
well, one thing I, I learned uh, from like giving speeches in moments, is you that you can usually tell when somebody's like really used to giving speeches to big crowds because they don't look at anybody. Yeah, they they look sort of into a middle distance. Their head will tilt slightly to the side. They'll uh, they're not turn their heads they're... around, or they'll uh, shift their heads like left and right, or pan their heads. They'll pan their heads. That's the word yeah, I was but, trying to say. Because the moment you look at the audience and you really settle in and start counting the numbers, that's when the panic starts. If you can ignore the crowd, turn it into background. Just make the people in the audience the same as like a piece of wood or a doll that's when you can give a speech because like so many people that i know and, and i i used to work with well i didn't work with people who were giving speeches but when i was like doing speeches and stuff for like high school and even like earlier when i was doing theater the one thing i have to tell people is don't look at the audience the audience doesn't exist it's you and you alone on that stage, and there's another person there. <laughs> oh, by the way, one thing I really like about this, uh, time actually does change. Absolutely, I love that. W with each chapter. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, this one, uh, like, because in Dark Souls, uh, 221B, 221B, the Sherlock Holmes address. Uh, in Dark Souls, it is, um, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? Ah, uh, time is, like, localized. Mm. That's uh, fair. Yeah, in Dark Souls, time is localized, so that kind of, which I do like. It's I, practical. Yeah, and also it, it makes it kind of cool. Um, but, uh, like, Dark Souls 3 is the only time, like, time actually happens after you beat the, uh, a after you beat the, uh, Cinder Lords, all of them, and the, uh, sky becomes an eclipse. There's a lot of games that had to, um... Aw, oh, yeah! There's uh, a lot of games yeah. in which, like, time is hard-baked into, like, the position. Uh, part of that is because, like, Ah, uh, though... yeah, ah, uh, yeah! <laughs> how bad can I be? How I've... bad, how bad, or how bad me be? I've I'm been doing what sitting on this. <laughs> oh. I've been sitting on that. Are this... you biggering? This will be the uh, this will be the outfit I use for pr most of the other game. There's one outfit that I like more than this, but it is literally end game. How bad? How bad? How bad? Me be? I'm just doing what comes naturally. I like biggering more. Biggering is one of those so, songs. so one thing I really like about biggering uh, is so in how bad can I be? Uh, the line is the lines are um because the uh, uh on oh, what, what was it it was like something something uh i shall open it and add it to the many thanks good sir i'm hearing that there's a specific god, line dear, okay ah oh, god i'm trying to remember the lyrics uh, but it's like, uh, I, I just don't remember, it's, what is the line before the money's multiplying? The PR people are lying. No, 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 that is, at, that is at the very end, or towards the very end. I'm talking but about before the that. PR people are lying. No. And the money's multiplying. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, uh... Because it's something, something, something. The uh, money's multiplying. Wait. Oh, maybe. No, 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 no. I, I, okay. Because the lawyers are denying. No, because there's four verses. It is lawyers okay, are denying. P PR people's lying. Money's multiplying. Uh, 
what is the first verse? I know the last verse, which is the important verse, though. All right, let's let's Google it. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Oh. Yes. I'm building an economy. Just look at me petting this puppy. No. A portion of proceeds will go to charity. How bad can I possibly be? All the customers are buying. That's what it is. That's what buying. it is. That's we got it. We got because the customers are buying and the money's multiplying and the. Uh, PR, PR people people's lying. lying and the lawyers are denying and then in how bad can I be he says who cares if a few trees are dying in big ring the line isn't who cares if a few trees are dying it's who cares if some things are dying which is a very big difference because that means that uh, it is more than a few and uh, it is more than just trees Yeah. And it's a very brutal line, too. Oh, yeah. Because it makes him complicit. In, uh... Uh, in... In How Bad Me Be. <laughs> yeah, in How uh, Bad Can I it's Be. It's very much a denial song. Well, it's a, uh... uh oh, God. D uh, plausible deniability. Yeah. It's the plausible deniability song. Like, uh, how bad can I be? Other people are probably doing it far worse. Uh, clearly, that what I'm doing isn't that bad. It, it's deniability. He's he's denying, but also plausibly. He's like, oh, clearly, I'm just doing what comes naturally to nature. Meanwhile, in biggering, they make it very clear. Oh yeah, and they call yeah. out that it is. Not just greed. Greed is just a symptom. It is his pride. And that the actions are his and his alone that are... Uh, the, the actions are his and his alone. Absolutely. God, Biggering is such a, a great song. It's got, like, Pink Floyd vibes. It definitely is, like, one of those songs where I'm, like... We know why. It's a, shame, it's a shame they chose not to do it, but at the same time, when the movie's as corporate as it is... <laughs> yeah, they they couldn't not do it, or they couldn't do it any other way because, uh, you know, they needed the... Uh, they needed all that money from uh, Hyundai. Yeah, God, that's still, like... That is the most... Tone deaf, uh. That, that was the most tone deaf advertising campaign. The Lorax approved. Oh. Constantly. There's a Legion caliber! I, I got the Legion caliber. Uh, how many do I have? Uh. One. That's. I think I need two in order to upgrade. Two or three to upgrade my arm further. Cause the customers are buying and the money's multiplying and the PR people's lying and the lawyers are denying. Who cares if something could die? I don't wanna see you crying. This is also gratifying. I think like one of my issues with like the Lorax movie is that it bungled the message really here, here's bad. The thing I was like really trying to like that for the longest time. I was like, I can't be that bad. It, it, How bad it's could it be? It's with like popcorn food, etc., etc. And then like the more I've sat on it, the more I've grown to realize, no, I've, it really is that bad. And yeah. the problem is, um, in trying to defend it, I kind of uh, was not... A, I was kind of like dismissing a lot of people who are like, it's bad, it's bad, the original is better. I'm like, ah, let people enjoy what they want. And I... I are like, yeah, they were right in the end, dang it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
Look, we all defend stupid things. Uh, and I come defend to you all the time. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I defended David Jaffe's uh, Metroid Dread uh, faux pas. Funny enough, you when I, when I brought it up to you, you were like really like. The game can't be that bad. They can't have bungled it that bad. And then you played it, and then you're like, oh no, he he he, he it's a game issue. And then like later, you're like, no no, he, it's a him issue. Well, no no no, it it wasn't that it was a. I didn't say it was a game issue. What I said was I can understand, uh, how someone might uh miss Fall it. Into what he or, did. Or, yeah, if you don't miss, because it's the clear intention of that uh, room is to fucking get oh fuck uh you know what gonna get some distance gonna get some fire and it's so weird because I really like the uh I, I like Mercury Steam as a company like I used to be like I, I i never actually been, like, sitting to myself, like, I'm a big fan of Mercury's game. Nonsense. I'm a fan of no company. Um. But there, there have been points where I'm like, we see Mace good games, and, like, it reminded me of Dread, and I'm like, uh, do they really? And then I'm like, uh, they did what they could. What the fuck is wrong with my recovery time? What the fuck? It was like a full three second recovery time. Wait, did my weapon break? Or something. Gosh, I blinked. I, I I'd I'd have to scroll back through your your uh, your video. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know why, but the recovery time was like a good three seconds after a perfect fuck. Okay, that's on me. Uh, after a perfect guard, uh, it was like a good three seconds before I could do anything, and I know that's not right. <laughs> Fair enough. Fuck it. Uh, Metroid Dread does have its issues. Most er most every game has an issue. Some, somewhere where it's like it doesn't go great, but some games do amazing, you know. So sometimes games can hide their little flaws, you know. Yeah, or the good parts of the game are good enough to uh uh let to, the issues slide. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm gonna place you. I'm to Whoa, what the fuck? Where did you come from? I'm trying to think of a game where I can like it despite its flaws. Uh, well, there's definitely some games. Uh, the Tomb Raider reboot, probably. Did you ever play that one? Nope. It's the darkier, darker and edgier uh, Laura Croft game. Yeah, I know. I I saw. Uh, I don't remember who, but I saw someone doing a summary of it. Uh, that would be Game Explained by uh, Internet Historian. Uh, excuse me, it's pronounced Explained. Fair enough. Kind of like Spleen. It really is a shame how uh, Mark Zuckerberg finds so much time to just work with um, in a historian on these videos. You'd think he would be spending all of his time on like his company, considering how much uh, trouble he's getting into for neglect right now. <laughs> nah, I'm teasing. I know. We all know it's an AI Zuckerberg, and a historian has been ahead of the curve. <laughs> no. Um, anyway, uh, the 2013 Tomb Raider game was pretty good. Uh, if you ask me, like, what are some issues? There we like, go. 
Uh, it, it's got a few. Uh, one of its DLCs. Ah, this is, is it. Clearly then. not tested. Is this it? So, um, I think it is. So here's one thing about that nobody's ever brought up besides me. Uh, but in the Tomb Raider deals in Tomb Raider 2013, there's a DLC for like an extra extra dungeon. But they clearly did Yo! Like, hold uh, on, hold on, hold on. I need to grab my share and leave. Yo! <laughs> it's my favorite boy. Also, this is a beautiful view. Oh, it's absolutely impressive. You can see every area. You can see the uh, the carnival in the or the circus in the background with the Ferris wheel. You can see Hotel Crat uh, over there. Uh, you can see Vanini works right there. Do you live under a rock? Oh, it's very well made. I'm Aladoro. Yeah. Treasure hunter I love Aladoro. Yes, he's so great. He is. All my homies stand Aladoro. I don't think we're going to get to the Malum District. Or I don't think we're going to do the Malum District this episode. That's fair. Do you know the place where I can take refuge? You spent like a good, what, half hour on one enemy? Yeah. Vanini uh, works. Right? What? You got the enemy in the end, right? Oh, yeah. Remember I climbed up the ladder I just, and, and yeah. did the cheese method? I was trying to do it without doing the cheese method. The super cheese method. That's fair. I hate the shield. And also, I am not used to being this underpowered. You gotta remember, last time I played it was on the uh, New Game Plus. Uh, let's see. I think that right there. And you're denying yourself like weapon upgrades. Oh yeah, I had a. Uh, let's see. That's the town hall where we beat the scrapped watchman, I believe. Right? That square. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That that's definitely it. Yeah. Yeah, because it leads to Benini Works. Yeah. Let's see, then there's the that right there. It looks like the. Uh. Where is the funicular we took up there? It's probably... Is that the funicular? I think that's the area that leads to the... Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, it, this game has a really good sense of, like, world. Progress? Uh, not progress. World. Like, everything connects. It, it connects in, I'm going to be honest, like, a l few silly ways. Like... Why the heck does Vanini Works connect to like the uh, the church <laughs> or the town hall? Yeah, yeah. So the town hall makes sense. You go you go through some streets and all that. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's a little but, bit like the, the the church from Vanini Works. Well, is a little bizarre. Well, no, it it leads to the uh, the slums are the neighborhood that's uh, behind the. Um, the slums are the area that's behind Vanini Works, and it's there that the funicular to the uh, to the church is. So the mm. church is a decent distance away from Vanini Works. It's just we have to go through uh, an area. Fair enough. Wow, you could not have done it any worse. You didn't even try. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, here we go. And before I progress, one thing I, I want to open up the shortcut and rest. Actually, we might be able to do the uh... the Malum District. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, you want to go for it, I would be up for like. We've only been going about an hour. Okay. And I doubt we're, we're getting at a better click than we thought we were. Yeah. Been about thirty minutes on one, and we might have been an exaggeration. Who knows? No, it's okay. Ah. Uh... Can be you. That's gonna be. I don't have any electric. I should buy some electric abrasives. All right. Uh. 
gonna buy electric abrasives real quick. Just a couple. Well, good to have on hand, you know? Yeah, because I need to equip them to my hotbar, but I don't have any. Mm. Now that I have the fire abrasives, I can actually start uh, building my uh, hotbar uh, the way I usually do. Out here alone? Makes sense. There we go. There's that, and now I need to... Yeah. The Cathedral of San Francisco. Um... So, over the week, uh, so, uh, a 13-year-old kid beat Tetris. Yes, as we discussed. Uh, did we discuss it in this episode? Uh, the Dark Souls one. I oh, don't know, the God of War one. Oh, we talked about it in God of War? Pretty sure we did. In case we didn't, uh, a kid named, uh, a kid who goes by Blue Scooty, uh, achieved the kill screen in, uh, in Tetris. The kill screen is where the, uh, program starts reading the RAM instead of the code and, uh, causes the game to be uh, unplayable. Uh, you, sometimes it's due to, like with uh, Pac-Man, it's due to half of the screen becoming a garbled mess, and uh, that results in uh, not being able to uh, progress. Yeah, clear the board to progress to the next level. In Tetris's case, it was. Uh, in the case of Tetris, it was uh, just a, a stop. Uh, it, it was just a stop command. It caused the game to just outright stop. And uh, yeah, fair enough. You're actually gonna go uh, see him uh, well, at a uh, tournament later, right? Yeah. Uh, in a couple weeks, uh, I'm gonna. He, he's gonna be here in Texas. Uh, uh, about an hour and a half away from where I live, uh, performing at the, um, performing in Waco, uh, or competing in Waco. Oh, right, that's what I was going for. Uh, and I am going to, next week I'm going to be buying tickets to that. Sounds like fun. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. It, it's a convention, like it's an actual like full on convention. Uh there's other stuff there. Um the voice actress for like Tuttenstein is going to be uh having a panel there. There's going to be like a Robot Wars kind of thing. Uh sounds like fun. You. Yeah. Uh I'm going to be going with Biddy. Honestly, you should have told me that you were planning to go to the convention. I wasn't planning on going until, like, a couple days ago. Fair enough. Because, you know, this wasn't on my radar until a couple days ago. Fair enough. Wait. Oh, right. It's not until after I beat the boss that I get the music record. She, she leaves it behind. Shush. Fair enough. All right. This is one of my favorite boss designs. This game has so many good bosses. I cannot put them on a tier list because a lot of them I would put on S tier. That's fair. Like, I love this boss's design. Oh. It very much is like a very spooky design. Just yeah, this the centipede. Also, I love that shot. I, I'm always a big fan of shots where you see things from the uh, opponent's viewpoint. Uh, especially when they have, like... I love how his fingers are, like, merged. Two of his fingers are merged. 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, Rayman does something like that Ooh, in the... A little bit uh, of texture weirdness. In the second game. Like, one of the bosses chases you, and you get to see the, uh... And you platform from his perspective. Ooh, I love the mask falling. Oh, absolutely great, um... Great pacing on that. Then the full brunt of the body. This is, like, what I wanted out of the Demon of Song in Dark Souls 2. Oh, the licking of the lips. The eyes. But this that guy... That massive body is really, really sick looking. So many mouths. I bet it's upside down, too. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of, like, upside down faces. Whiff, whiff. A lot of the bosses in this game are made easier by the splitting of aggro. But it still doesn't make them super easy, you know? Yeah. Oh. There we go. Oof. Oof, killed him. That was easy. Nice. He, oh, goes, he goes down like, ever. yeah, he goes down like paper mache. It really is like a neat design, but like, yeah, de definitely like, the oh, boss isn't like super. Oh wait, yeah, and then he oh, just he's exploding. Ex yeah, you gotta escape before he explodes. He's got a timer. It's really cool. Uh, it's like Mother Brain. <laughs> but no, this is actually a really fucking sick reveal. Oh yeah. I love these kinds of angelic designs where it's just a. G I'm always a fan of the face just being a hole. Absolutely gotta agree with that. Yeah, and he's got a one wing angel design. He's got one wing, he's got a scythe. That's a staff. Oh. Now, it's a really cool boss. Uh. But also the camera. Uh, yeah, so, de definitely he's a bit too lanky for the camera. But the cool thing is, you can fight him from that side, and it's still the, uh, the oh, wait. old boss. Shit! I I did the wrong. Yeah, and honestly, it's easier to fight. Fuck! Oh wait. Fair enough. The timings on the, uh, the, the back half are much easier to deal with. Look at that fire damage. That no, 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 no. Fuck. I was trying to get oh. out of the way. Oof. Yeah. Uh... He's a really good boss. Alright, uh... Can you see if Palachina, uh... Sells... Uh... Actually, I'll, I'll just check. I'll, I'll see what he has to, to see. see if he sells the braces? I think he does. Uh, let's see... Well, if he does, it's more expensive than the uh, wandering merchants. But there's other stuff I want to see if he sells. True. Uh. Welcome to Hot. Uh, no, he doesn't. But I could. Get that. Yeah. I'm gonna get that. Uh. 
29. Uh, alright. I'm at 22. There we go. Welcome to... Alright, let's do our quartz. Yep, let's quartz it up. I love it whenever uh, quartz set. I love it when Rose Quartz says it's quartz in time and quartz is all over <laughs> the diamonds. I'm a big fan of when Rose Quartz uh, commits war crimes. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm definitely going to need. Oh, reduce oh, item prices. Well, because I needed the uh, the extra uh, the extra pulse cell charge or the oh, increased heal. Was. No, yeah, the extra pulse cell was uh, more important at the time. That's fair. All right. <sighs> Something I'm gonna I wanna say about Lives of P is that the game is beautiful. Absolutely. You, you don't get like I've I've been thinking about like humanity and all that recently because cause, like what's the meaning of like art? And the one thing I, I've come to just sort of say is Lives of P is a reflection of something that we as people want to say or feel. Because we live in a world without meaning. Or it has meaning depending on how you want to look at things. But art is us looking into the world and saying, but what am I? Art is a reflection of the self and its creator so many more times than it is anything else. Because no matter how much you corporatize something, however much you like throw in statistics, the important thing about art is that it always has to be made by someone. Yeah. And, if, and you can't just throw something into a generator and get art. Like, it's been said many times, as we all know, uh, the more corporatized something is, the more broad the appeal is meant to appease, the, the less people... Times, when you try to... Everyone. Yeah, when you try to appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. Like, somebody like Tim Burton, um, something like Edward Scissorhands, no matter how much of a mess Edward Scissorhands can be, and how oftentimes you can be like, yeah, here's the problem with Edward Scissorhands. It comes from a place Fucking of meaning. Let me get to your butt! E even down to, like, the the actor playing Scissorhands. Yeah, Johnny because Depp. Because Johnny Depp wanted that role specifically because he was sick of doing pretty boy stuff. Yeah. He didn't want to be just another pretty boy face. He didn't want to be, like, an actor known as being pretty. Feel free to use your, uh, your special move. <laughs> that does like a lot of stagger damage. Yeah, I know. And and he went to Tim Burton and I'm like, and he was like, I want in on this. I don't care what you do, have me do. I want to be the monster. And th that that was sort of like the impetus for like a lot of where Johnny Depp goes now. And oh, I survived. That, Fuck. And oh you wait. Don't get that kind of thing. Shit. By just being like, oh, man, you're out. Uh, I forgot to equip the star stone. Oh, shoot. Oh, God. Oh, no. dang it, no. I, as I said, it, I saw you take yeah. that hit. Okay, let me equip the star stone. That's my B. I think the, uh, the even reason... Even stuff like, um... Even something like, say... What's it called? What's it called? Yeah, uh, the third mummy movie, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Oh, that one destroyed. Uh... Oh yeah, 
his back. But, but here, here, here's the thing. Uh, it is forever going to be known as the movie that destroyed Brendan Fraser's back. <laughs> and, and that's the important thing about art. Sometimes art has risks. Yeah, so... art, art is something you're putting into it. Um, yeah, even a bad film has something to like, say about it. Yeah, and sometimes a bad film has messages that are like definitely not what was intended. But I'll say this: as much as like I can sit down and say that the Wonder Woman 1984. The 1993 um, Mario Brothers movie is inferior to the new 2022 film. I still prefer the 1993 film. Yeah. The 1993 film is something that I have not seen before. I have seen the 2020 Mario film many times. Back when it was called Storks, back when it was called uh, Snail Fast and the Furious. Oh, Every Turbo. Generic... <laughs> okay. But with the world's number one Turbo fan out here. There's only one movie about snails and fast... and racing. I, I know, but I didn't even remember its name, but you did. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh yeah, get out in the middle. The, the important thing about art is that even bad art has a purpose. Even a bad art, um, it may not mean what the creator thinks it means, and hey, sometimes it can have really bad effects. But like, art means something because there's an intent behind it. And no matter how much you put- Oh, fuck! This is just an ah. art prompter. Fuck, go, no, no, no! I mean, oh, I it? saved it! I saved it! Oh! No oh. how much is that to an AI art prompter and go, put it No, 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 no. Fucking hell! It's not gonna, it's not gonna create something more Did they, meaningful. did they buff that attack? I've never died this much to it. What's happening is that you're, uh... Is that you're getting hit by either the front half or the back half? Because the back half is a slam. I I know. Well, the back half, half I, but I've never died to it. It was never like this difficult to dodge, or either that, or it didn't do this much damage. Actually, wait, hold on. I, I need to. Uh, do I have? No, I do not. Okay, you and. Oh, that's why. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna. Yeah, we're not gonna do the Malum District today. <laughs> Creation <sighs> inherently comes with risk, and risk inherently comes with meaning, because nothing worth doing has been without risk. Yeah, makes sense. Even, say, something like Steven Universe <laughs> has more meaning and more risk put into it than some people have put into their entire lives. And Steven Universe had a lot risking. It risked a lot. Oh, yeah. they. Uh, in fact, it was ended early because uh, of the gay wedding. Like, Cartoon yeah. Network was like, if you do this gay wedding plan that you have, we will not renew you for another season. And Rebecca Sugar was like, fuck it. I'm doing it. This is my vision. If it's not, if I can't do, if it costs me another season, then so be it. But I am going to do my vision. And then it got a movie, and then it got a whole new season. Well, what <laughs> happened was it was already approved for a movie. the The movie was already in the works when it ended, but what? But, but um, they had um, uh, Cartoon Network executives were like, "You can't have a movie without uh, uh, sh like without a show to tie it in." Yeah. They basically, uh... They cancelled it, 
uh, but couldn't do anything to stop the movie due to contract reasons. And then yeah. we're like, oh, hey, we could uh, make more money off the movie by having a tie-in, a, a sequel show tie-in. They basically, uh, they cancel something and then trick themselves and then giving it another season anyway. Uh, classic executive mindset. Yeah. Fucking stop that! Fucking hell. God damn it! You know what? I don't I, think I'm gonna be honest. They think the, 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 the fact that they tricked themselves in like give, giving uh, Rebecca Sugar okay. another season anyway is just hilarious. <laughs> God, I wish I had the Carcass Destroyer amulet. That's very convenient to have, but I think you get that after this. Yeah, you get in the Mountain District. I do not remember the, uh... I, I don't remember the timings. Mm, timing is always tricky. Yeah. Oh, lightning is better than nothing. I love when bosses try to talk to you. Oh yeah. If you swap to the Salamander Blade, you'll always have a uh, fire damage. You know what, that's actually not that bad of an idea. Draw aggro! What the fuck? That was such a... Oh, it's regeneration. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him... Uh... No, Take no, no. some of the aggro. No, oh, that's not working. Oof. I am impressed you made that. Yeah. Oof. Look at those wumbo heads. Yeah. Alright, I might oh. actually I might actually swap the Salamander Blade. Yeah, it doesn't have the range that I'd prefer, but that fire will definitely probably come in handy. Yep. It's a good blade because it can just proc fire damage normally. And its special move is just it gives you like a uh, free fire grinder. And the handle does like most of the range anyway. I know, but still. Look, once I get the uh, bone cutter saw blade, I'm gonna be in business. And here, here's here's the thing about like art. Noting back to it, you saw where like that uh that little platter was positioned right in front of the statue that was holding his hands up. Yeah, that's intent. You don't get that with like AI, you know. You don't get that with like a slurry of visuals. That is intent. That is willingful intent where somebody looked at a visual and said it needs to go right here by this particular statue. And I love that the um, the little platter, the little stargazer, is always on the left-hand side, you know? Yeah. That's also intense. It also has meaning. And he always comes in from the left-hand side when, when he shows up in the boss fight. Oh, this is doing such pitiful damage. Uh, turn on the, uh, press the hit the triangle button. No, I'm, I'm gonna do that once uh, in oh. phase two. 
the okay. fuck? You can't backslide in me! Unhand him, Ban backslide! Fucking stop back doing that! Back on belly to belly. Okay. One of my favorite animations of all time is literally the one with like zombie jamboree. You know, you know the one with the dude with the werewolf mask being attacked by the zombies. I have no idea what you're talking about. But I'll dig it up later. It's like one of those great old new ground animations. It must be like a decade old at this time. Oh. And you're, and you're back up to the table arts. You can do it again. Oh, hold on. I need to get some distance. Oh, fair enough. He slammed on me. I was trying to get out. The camera oh. fucking... As you can see, the camera fucked me over there. Yeah, I saw that. that, that that's messy. That's why I try not to target the front side, because the front side has a way worse camera. That's fair. Ah, God. Once I... So, another reason why the mountain... Mountain District is the best area in the game. Well, for certain reasons. Not only... Excuse me. Not only will I get my favorite uh, blade... Uh, but also there's a merchant there that actually, that sells every kind of throwable and consumable. Always convenient. Oh god, I d I'm not used to the, the parry window for this weapon. Oh, right, the parry window is changing each weapon. Yeah, uh, the window for the perfect guard is dependent on uh, the blade handle and the blade. So, uh, and that's another reason why I will be popping off once I get my uh, preferred blade. Oh, fair enough, I totally get it. Fuck okay, it, I'm gonna fight this side. Alright, let's do it. I'm hyped. Actually, no. I'm like the node of like Steven Universe. Steven Universe also has some really good monster designs. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh yeah, this is it. It's gonna be it. Oh yeah! yeah. Woo! Boom! So glad I managed to guard that uh, slam at the end. Oh. Oh! You did it with the salamander blade. With two minute, with a minute and a half left. Oof. Whew. Do they ever explain this scene in particular? Yeah. I'll I'll explain. It it, it contains spoilers. But yeah. See, I told you the uh, boss area was down that deep hole. Ah uh, yes. I mean, I knew that. I know. <laughs> oh, okay, now I'm remembering what this cutscene is for. Yeah. Fair enough. It's building a pipe. I just realized what that is in the center. 
Oh my god, I just realized how dumb this cutscene is now. <laughs> when you think about it, when you know what that is, I love it. Um, what is it? I, I'm, I'm forgetting. I'll tell you off screen because it, it's spoilers. Okay, fair enough. Oh. Uh, Twisted Angels Ergo. I want to go back to the old Krat. The old me. Before the green overtook. I like that some bosses oh, like have the yeah. little echoes of the past. That's their Ergo. Yeah. I wish more bosses. Oh had yeah. That. Uh Let's see. Um, Cecile's written confession. Thank you for your kindness. I'm a sinner who murdered innocent people in the past. I couldn't suppress the monster inside me. Only the Archbishop saved me. Of course, he was human. He was a human who made mistakes. Even saints have come to wealth and power. But at least I can live myself, and that's a huge blessing. So yes, I believe that he was a saint. Uh, now you open the second path. Uh, thank you for letting me live as a human and not as a monster. Farewell, Cecile. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. It's kind of cute, on you know, oh, the fact exactly. that she actually killed people. Well, yeah. I mean, in a Souls game, is there any in a Souls-like game? It's like mandatory to have a church that kills people. That's fair. In Dark Souls, it was the Way of White. Um, in uh, Dark Souls Two, it was the Spider Church. Yeah. Uh, the the in Dark Souls Three, it's the uh, uh, ones that are of part of the Hollow Lord quest. I've been uh, the uh, the Church of Yorshka, I think is I right. Probably. First, I think so. Let me show you a little something I've been uh, the, the one uh, head by uh, Freed's uh, sister. Flair, but I assure Fair you enough. It works. If my suspicions are correct, something in the pub's very ergo is causing their aggression. Uh, the decoder can find malicious signals within the waves, but I cannot possibly get close enough to gather the ergo wave records myself you on the other hand would you could you i i refuse to believe the king of puppets is truly behind this this puppet rampage it's too simple but also a bit too much even for him no I suspect the ergo itself. Oh, something corrupted the ergo. Compromised. Ooh, what could corrupt I ergo? Probably that guy that was harvesting all the powerful ergo. No, couldn't be. That's too convenient. Yeah, it's too simple, even for him. <laughs> okay. Uh, where the fuck? There you are. Seeking refuge became monsters. Some of the petrification disease turns you to stone, not into a monster. I'm worried about the Malam district, just below the cathedral. I wonder whether there are monsters there. All right, level me up. Yeah. Also, my health was way low for that. <laughs> oh! 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 Fuck! What? Best animated film of the year. Guess what it is? The Golden Globes. Uh, I I I don't know what uh. The Boy and the Heron. Miyazaki Sweep. Oh, I still need to see that. Same. I, I've seen enough of it to know that I need to see it. <laughs> it's a Miyazaki film. He came out of retirement. Robert Pattinson. Yeah, he came out of retirement in order to make that. You know and how Robert Pattinson <laughs> playing a character. Yeah, the Heron. Yeah. All right. Well, so once you make that like a uh, boy, that pretty boy, like young adult movie, then you can just make whatever the heck you want from then on. I I do love that Robert Pattinson and uh and uh Daniel Radcliffe 
almost exclusively do like batshit insane rolls. Absolutely. Uh, cause I completely respect their desire to uh, not be remembered as the uh, uh, main character of their respective uh, movie series is that got them famous. I can absolutely understand why they don't want to uh, be uh, limited to that. <laughs> I totally get it. Yeah. Anywho, uh, let's do our sign off. Um, All right. Thank you everybody for watching. This was uh, Lies of P. Um, tune in next week for the Malum District. Uh, An entire stream just to take down the church. We are too powerful. May um, actually, I don't know because we might be doing Cult of the Lamb next week, depending on wh whether or not the DLC drops. Oof. We'll have to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I it, tune in next week for either uh, more of this or uh, Cult of the Lamb. Um, I. I'm preparing a save file for when the DLC drops so that we can do the Relics of the Old Faith and the, uh, 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 and the Sins of the Flesh at once. Um, cause we didn't do, uh, the Bishops of the Old Faith when we played earlier, uh, when we played on the channel. True. So yeah, uh, let's see. There's other stuff on the channel. What are you playing? Uh, I am playing God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, and that's going to be coming to an end pretty soon. Probably. Yeah. We're, we're in the... Two to we're... three more streams. Yeah. Uh, and there is also Night in the Woods being played by our friend Biddy. Um, there is a couple ta uh, tabletop RPGs going on. Uh, one of which is my homebrew d, &D 5e campaign called World of Tapir, where the players are pirates. Uh, the current arc is they are stuck in a time loop. Um, there is also uh, System Wasteland, which is a homebrew system created and run by our friend Chalkvi, where aliens turn the world into a JRPG. Uh, so yeah. Uh, common challenge of the day... What art has made you feel? Oh God! Just feel, as in the name of the song. But <laughs> it, it, it. yeah, what what art? Any kind of media. Uh, it, it could be music. It could be a show. It could just be an image. It could be a book, a video game. Like what? What is something that made you feel uh, very strong emotions? And what emotions were they? So, this one's gonna come as a surprise. Yeah? Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Oh, I that's not surprising. You've told me uh, this because yes. of the the first scene. The opening. The opening is... So the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy, is for, for, as everyone should be aware, is the incredibly intense scene in which a young Peter Quill uh, sees his mother dying in front of him of cancer and the intense emotion of being unable to reach out and take her hand. Yeah. And I have been in that exact same position, and that scene... Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful scene. It's, it's it, in, if you... intense. The, 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 and it even comes through in the ending where he actually gets the chance to actually take her hand by reaching out to somebody, somebody else, rather than running all the time like he's been doing the entire film. Yeah, he, his character is defined by him refusing to take her hand in the beginning. And it's, it's beautiful. And James Gunn absolutely hit it home with that one brilliant scene. Um... I have a movie recommendation for you that either is going to be one of the best horror movies you've seen or one of the worst, depending on... It, but Before I Wake is a really good... Uh, I, I know you don't like horror, so I'll go ahead and spoil the ending for you. Uh, 
It's about a kid who every time, uh, whenever he sleeps, his dreams become manifested uh, into reality. Uh, only while he's sleeping, though. They disappear once he wakes up. Uh, but that also includes his nightmares, including uh, a creature called the Canker Man. Uh, and it takes people uh, out of his... He t it takes the people who get close to him. Uh, and the ending, the reason why the Canker Man's designed like that, it, it's a like a humanoid, but very gaunt and hairless. And it is because... Uh, he wa watched his mother die of cancer, and that, uh, s like, he also was in a situation where he didn't, like, he refused the chance to say goodbye, and that, because he was so young, that, like, sort of internalized, uh, like, cancer took his mother, but he couldn't read, so it was canker. Mm. And so, that's why, uh he couldn't recognize his mother in the bed and that's why he was scared uh and that's why it stuck with him so uh, my my uncle um my uncle had a very messy uh had a very messy divorce in like around 2012 2011 and uh, part of this was um, the stress from a miscarriage. Oof. Uh, in 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 his that his wife had, and it was around that time that Up came out. <laughs> oh God, that's uh, probably. I uh, th because, because nobody because everybody's like, oh, the opening is so sad. But nobody ever tells you what the opening is because they don't want to. Because the gut punch is the hard part. Um, yeah, he 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 could not stay in the theater uh, for that set. Yeah, un uh, understandable. Um, for me, the uh, art that makes me feel extreme emotions is probably the Ballad of the Windfish, because I was five uh, or. No, I was four. Four? Yeah, four. When I first got, uh... Like, Link's Awakening was my first video game, period. And so the soundtrack of that, like, brings me back to those days back in uh, late 1999, early 2000, where we had just moved out of our trailer home into a two-story house. My dad had just gotten a, a job at uh, designing websites during the height of the dot-com bubble um and uh like that was when uh, that was when life like before everything got fucked up you know uh, another, another movie that uh that that really cries out to me is um treasure planet oh yeah that's a great one oh it, it's beautiful um, there actually, it's not just Treasure Planet. There is a um, there's a fan fiction I read once. Oh that boy, was based on Treasure Planet, and it, it's um. I mean, Treasure Planet is in of itself uh, a masterpiece. Uh, well, fan fiction of fan fiction. it's uh, sci-fi themed Treasure Island. True. Uh, anyway, the the fan fiction is a one shot that takes place uh, at a bar that Lon John Silver is hanging out at, and he meets uh, like another man who's like a miner, uh, who who just got back from like mining and is basically just like trying to relax at the bar, and they're talking, and throughout the conversation, Silver starts to realize just who he's talking to jim's father yes <laughs> and at the end of the conversation when he's like absolutely sure uh he's he's walking away and he's like oh by the way there's uh there's one person who i do care for in the world and his name is jim hawkins and that's where it ends Oh god, I love ambiguous endings like that. 
Yeah. All right. Well, uh, with that out of the way, there's no less to say, but good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.